We are still with the Angama Pride here live in the Masai Mara and the lionesses of the Angama Pride are once again on the hunt. They took a brief break to spend some time with the kids, all ten of them, all ten hungry mouths that they have to feed and now the lionesses have spotted a zebra off in the distance. One lioness has gone around behind me and I can't move from where I am because they accidentally bought three of the kids with on their grocery shopping trip. So there's three cubs right in front of our vehicle. And the lionesses are hunting a zebra that's probably, if I had to guess in the inky blackness, probably around about a hundred meters or so away from them. There they go, moving around. Let's stay with the lionesses for now. There they go. Janine, you say this is awesome. Oh yes, get that back stretched out, ready to run. It is awesome, isn't it, Janine? It is absolutely incredible, and it's been the most phenomenal experience watching the way that these lionesses coordinate their hunt. Look at that. One flanking off to the right, one going down the middle, and one, oh, hold on, change in direction, one that has gone right around behind us. Uh, I just want to show you one of the reasons why we're a little bit hamstrung. They're in front of us. There's three of them. The reasons that, they're, that we're a little bit stuck but I'm gonna actually go backwards and then reposition to get to these lionesses and get a little bit ahead. So in front of me are three tiny, not tiny cubs, three of the older cubs. And I'm just gonna duck around them. Hello little guys. Yes, you weren't meant to come grocery shopping. Oh, hold on. Cubs are on their way. Don't ruin the hunt, little cubs. Okay, they're gonna hide in the grass here. I'm gonna go around them. This is very, very exciting. Hello, little ones. There we go, give them enough space that they don't feel too nervous. And on with the hunt we go. Are oh, we just in the distance saw a zebra? Oh, we've got to find these lionesses again. stop here and you see up ahead of me there Manu if you go straight towards that oh gosh how am I gonna direct you here there 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 there's the zebra there's the zebra in the darkness it's quite far away if I drive too much closer I'm going to interrupt their very carefully planned hunt so one lioness is obviously flanked off to the left of me to go and head the zebra off the other two lionesses must be in the grass somewhere in front of me here and that is their intended target. That is what they're after. It is utterly astounding, the whole scenario that's played out tonight. The lioness is hunting this evening, unsuccessfully, trying to follow the zebra. And then they had to abandon what they were doing because they heard the males roaring very close to where they'd stashed their cubs. So they came rushing back, collected the cubs, and now they're on the hunt once again after a little bit of a brief break, some playtime with the little ones. Oh, the zebra's standing stock still, waiting to see what happens. Now, Carrie, you want to know how the sound of the vehicles doesn't influence the hunt. What we're very careful to do, and you'll notice that I keep my distance, is to make sure that we don't get ourselves in the wrong position. But remember, the lionesses are hunting visually, not by sound. So that we're not, as soon as we stop, then we're not in any way influencing the prey because they can't, they, as soon as we stop, they will be able to hear exactly what's going on around them. And the lionesses are con communicating, they can't communicate vocally, so they're communicating by sight. So we're very, very careful not to impact their hunt in any way. And that, of course, is why we're using infrared light because otherwise we'd be completely blind in this situation. Laura, yes, we are indeed. We are absolutely in night vision mode. We are watching in infrared. I cannot see a thing around me. I'm entirely reliant on where Manu points the camera. I think 
the lioness has picked up on the, uh, sorry, the, not the lioness, the zebra has picked up on the movement of the lioness that flanked to the left. She moved very, very quickly, but I don't think it's aware of the two lionesses that are moving around it. And this is the only thing that I could think is their intended target. And now we've just got to sit and wait patiently. As we saw this afternoon, it is always a process in work. Now Shamsun, no, unfortunately I'm not using the thermal imaging to help me see. We, at the moment, because obviously we're still busy rigging up the vehicles and getting everything sorted, so although all three of us will have thermal imaging in the future, at the moment Scott it gets a chance to play with the thermal imaging device and Brent has the other one. There's only two right now. So I'm flying a little bit blind. Zebra's head's down. It's feeding again. That's a very good sign. I know it's difficult to see. You'll just have to rely on those pixels in the dark for now. Because I don't know where the other lionesses are, we just have to sit patiently and wait. Brandon, no. The cubs are not far enough away to mess up the hunt. In fact, they're at that exact age where cubs really start to become a little bit of a problem for hunting mothers because they are really active and involved and they really want to help and they really don't know what they're doing and as a result they very often scare the prey away. The lioness has managed to ditch most of the cubs with one of the other lionesses but unfortunately three of them slipped through the cracks and have followed along with them. Zebra's head's up. You see, probably hearing rustling. You can just see the twinkle of its eye. It's really, really tricky to see, but I don't want to reposition at the moment, especially because I don't know which direction these lionesses are going to come from. Let's have a quick look around, see if we can see the lionesses. I still can't. It's amazing the speed that they move through the grass. Carrie, I don't know if the zebra is alone. Agreed, it would seem a little bit odd. In fact, I would suggest that there are probably more zebra on the outskirts behind it that we can't see. Obviously, our thermal lights, not our thermal lights, our infrared lights, have a certain range. And beyond that, we cannot see. I would suggest that there are more zebra behind it. These must be the stragglers, the last of the ones that didn't move up the mountain. The rest of them are all gathered together, not far away from where we are here. Now at this point, my ears are going to probably be the most reliable things out here. My ears and the infrared that we have of the zebra. I'm going to keep listening to see if I can hear the lions. Again, it's a game of patience, so we know this about the hunts, we've seen it with the Angamas, we saw it this afternoon, they are very, very patient creatures, and that lioness tried all afternoon to sneak up on the zebra, and she wasn't successful, but now the advantage of proper pitch black night is here. Now, Simon, you want to know how far away the infrared lights reach and if we can put a normal spotlight on the zebra. I'm going to answer the second question first. The answer is absolutely not. Putting a normal spotlight on the zebra will do one of two things. One, it is going to dazzle it. Haha, <laughs> excuse the pun. It wasn't intentional. It'll dazzle the zebra, which means that it actually won't be able to see the lions coming. Not, it won't blind it forever, but it will certainly, basically, if I were to shine a torch in your eyes and then say, right, off you go into the dark, so it won't be able to see very well at all. And secondly, it basically just influences the hunt apart from that because it makes, it changes the dynamics of everything. And it might actually make the zebra more alert to what's going on because it won't look up at us and wonder what's going on with our spotlight. So no, we can't. In terms of our distance, I'm actually not 100% sure. I have no idea how far this reaches. I would guess at around about a hundred meters or so. But 
that would be a guess at the furthest reaches. Obviously this is very, very far in. This is right on the fringes of our infrared. Here we go. Manu giving you a good idea of just how far we can see. I spoke about relying on my ears. Angie, you want to know what it is that we can hear. Is it dead quiet out here? It's absolutely silent. There is not a whisper. I can hear the wind in the grass a little bit. I can hear my foot slightly creaking on the brake pedal because I've, as usual, forgotten to take my foot off the brake. And that's it. Not a sound. That's why I'm so reliant on my ears at the moment because we will hear. If we don't see the chase, we will hear it. I'm certain that the zebra is their intended target though. This is what they're after. Maritza, yes, we have got a special pass to stay out at night. We have got special permission. And we also have an Ascari with us who is basically a fantastic person who comes along the back, sits up all night with us and makes sure that we are Oh, there he goes, there he goes, there's a line. She's on it. There she goes, there's another line that's come from behind it. Look at that. They're closing the distance. Where's that third line, S? She's going to be after it. Okay, the chase is on. That was so quick. It came out of nowhere. All right, hold on to your hats, everyone. They're racing down the hill. That third line is went that way. That was exactly what the lines were planning. Hold on, everyone. Oh, there's a hole. Found a hole. Where's the lions? They were racing in this direction. There's a lioness over there. Oh, I just needed to use my spotlight now that the now that the lights are now that the hunt has started. And I think they've missed it. That lioness would be on it immediately, and I think they just went that little bit too soon. The zebra's gone dashing off. And a failed hunt for now. Which of course is all part and par parcel of this whole process. I'm just checking to see where the other lionesses are. Right, so as soon as the hunt started, obviously, I pulled out my torch just briefly to catch up where on where the lionesses are. Let's go and catch up with her. That was incredible! That happened so quickly, just as we were talking. What were we even talking about? I don't know, I've forgotten already. And of course, oh, we were talking about the sounds of the night. That was it. I'm so glad I was right about their intended target. So, most initiated lion hunts end just like this, with exhausted lionesses, a prey, a prey animal somewhere that's got its heart rate beating through the roof, and an unsuccessful attempt. And that is why we stick with these lions all night. That was incredible. To see the sheer speed and coordination of these lionesses is something humbling. Hey girl, didn't work out the way you planned, huh? It's alright. It's next time. Alright, let's find... I'm just going to use my light to shine because I don't know where these cuts have gone, so I want to make sure that they're not close to me. I don't want to frighten them. That was absolutely heart-stopping stuff. Well done, ladies. But it's time to try again. And actually, what's most likely going to happen now is that they're going to need some time to recover. They're going to need some time to rest. A lion chase like that uses up a huge amount of energy for the lions. Now, 
while, they've got to try again somewhere new. Mita, my goodness. Mita, it's lovely to hear your name on our live broadcast. Mita sends through the best questions. She's eight years old. Me, oh, sorry, Mita's eight years old. And watches our live safaris almost every day. Now, Mita, you want to know if they will try again in a few minutes or if they're too tired. Mita, they're too tired. Most definitely. There goes the lioness. This is an area that I'm not going to be able to drive in. I'm going to have to go around. And she's listening now. Where are the other lionesses? Has she seen something that they, she could potentially catch? find the road again because this is a particularly boggy area let me find the road and then we'll go she's going straight back to where I left the lioness with the cubs astounding I don't know where I am I don't know where I'm going I'm hoping the road is in this direction it is yeah there's the main road see the, the rise of the main road. So there should be a road somewhere ahead of me, I hope. We'll find out. Oh goodness. She's found the road closer than I have, quicker than I have. Dina, you say, hold on everyone, you say that it's amazing how the black on the back of their ears is so visible. That's why it is. That is the incredible thing. There's the road. You are absolutely, hold on, correct. And that of course is what allows them to coordinate their hunts together by watching and following the signs of the backs of the ears. And that's why it's black, because it's a color that shows up so clearly. grass will ever get short enough so that we can see the animals better. Charlotte, it will. Once the migration arrives, absolutely, they come in the form of lawnmowers. Millions, well, hundreds of thousands of zebra and wildebeest will walk around here and they will very kindly mow the lawn for us so we can see the animals better. What that means, for our animals, of course, is that it gets harder for lionesses to hunt. They don't have the same amount of cover. They'll have to utilize different techniques at that time of year. Also, bear in mind that we've just come out of the rainy season. So whilst it will still continue to rain, the grass will die at the back of it. Where's this main road now? I didn't feel this far away earlier. It is there, though. what the success rate is in terms of hunts initiated versus successful hunts. I would guess at, I mean usually it's around about 1 in 12 or so. 1 in 10, 1 in 12, so about 10%. Go. just the around there around that ditch there there's some more cubs hello little ones how are you were you listening to the sounds of the hunt preparing for one day when it's going to be you hmm? little bold cub where's that adult lioness now you can see the cubs where has the lioness gone Let's have a look in front of us, Manu. Um, 
she was coming in this direction near the cubs they haven't gone running off somewhere have you seen a big lioness come past by any chance you must have she must have got here by now so where did she race off to all the little cubs gathered together and when I left the spot there was an adult lioness with the three tiniest cubs the mother of the three youngest cubs she's gone now I don't know where she's gone off to but she does have to come back this way <laughs> Marcel, you say that you can't get more live than this. No, absolutely not, you can't. It is Marcel saying out of the blue, exciting live uh, transmissions. And that, of course, will be our plan on these nightly jaunts of ours, to be sitting with the lions and, of course, to let you know as soon as something very exciting happens. Where's everybody going? What have you heard? That other lioness must have gone down this way. I don't know why she did, though. Fascinating. Adele, you would like to know how big this pride is. The answer to that is there are 14 lions in it. Four adult lionesses. And seven slightly older cubs. Here's a sign that says no off-road driving. And I've got special permission. Um, there are seven, seven older cubs and three tiny ones. Three very, very young ones that have only just recently been introduced to the pride. That's a lot of mouths to feed, which means these lionesses are going to be trying again sometime tonight. Without any doubt. It is going to happen again. They've got to keep trying until they succeed. But they will need a little bit of a rest after that chase. Brandon, yes, there are hyenas. Um, I haven't, I've heard some, but in the distance, as you saw with our hunt not so long ago with Steph and myself, the fact that the, li the hyenas show up very, very quickly, which I have to admit I find amazing that these lionesses have managed to keep this many cubs alive because they have to leave them when they go out hunting. They obviously stay in relatively close proximity and I've noticed they go back regularly to check on these little cubs. So I um, feel comfortable sitting with the cubs of course without spotlights so I'm not shining any lights on them. But with the infrared we can sit and watch them and watch their behavior. But there are hyenas around. I just don't think they're brave enough to challenge the cubs because they never know where the females are. Sarah, you would like to know how often these lions hunt regularly. We've already seen two hunting attempts this evening since 4 o'clock this afternoon. It is now, I don't know what time it is, 11-ish. Must be around 11, half past 10, 11. And that's twice they've attempted to hunt already. And they will continue to attempt to hunt throughout the night until they are successful. I would say they're probably going to have a rest for a couple of hours. As I said, it's quite an energy-consuming process trying to catch a zebra, especially when it gets away. And then you've got to cope with the emotional distress as well. But they, they'll rest for a couple of hours and then they will hunt again. They have to. They have to get these cubs fed. Hey, you two. What you up to? Heather, you want to know, moving on to slightly larger things, you want to know if I can see billions of stars out here. I can see billions and billions of stars. At the moment, my eyes are a little bit glared out from looking at the monitor, because obviously that's the way that I see things. But there are the stars here are out of this world. The southern hemisphere, of course, is the best place to come and stargaze, although we are quite close to the equator. There's very, very little light pollution out here, which means that we see all kinds of amazing stars. I know that Rebecca mentioned that she saw a shooting star not so long ago. She was very excited about it. So we can see so many stars. It's gorgeous. 
And they also happen to be very use. They also happen to be very useful because I don't know my way around. So you know, guessing the direction that I'm driving in, the ever faithful Southern Cross has been a huge help to me. I spend a lot of time glancing up at it, trying to work out exactly where I am. And the answer to that is that I'm facing due south, more well, almost due south. And the cubs have settled. I don't see a single lioness around. I'm actually probably going to go back and look for them on the road that we lost them on. The one lioness came back to check on the cubs, but I can't see her anymore. So I'm going to go back towards where they were chasing the zebra and see if I can catch up with them. So while I do that, I'm going to say toodaloo for now. As you've already gathered, as soon as something changes, we will be back with you. Have a wonderful night, day, wherever, I don't know what you, where you happen to be, but have a fantastic time, and I'm not going to stare into the infrared too much longer. I'll see you very, very shortly.